Welcome everybody, Red Arrow 23 here, time for another playbook episode. We're going to be adding the Tapir 8 o'clock rush to the playbook. Let's boom this booch! So we got Baron Von Steff, she's going to show us how to do this, this is Stephanie. Um, she's going to be bringing all Zookas with Brick. So let's have a quick look. Um, so first things first, we've got the um, mines just sort of around the core. Um, and we've got these mines in the middle here so we're going to be clearing these mines up by the core um, you'll see where the Zooka spread in a, <coughs> in a little while and you'll see that we needed to take them out um, and the boom mines you can usually you can leave the boom mines if you're only bringing Zookas and obviously the mines on the beach need to go too um, but if you are bringing a hero um, then you'll find that that hero will run ahead um, and dive on the boom mine for the team uh, taking one for the team but also meaning that she's out of action for the rest of the play so here we go we're gonna um we can usually go with a just straight flag land um, on the beach and once they sort of converge a little bit we can flare up so that we're in zooka range of the machine guns you do need to do this first um smoke a little bit um further away from the machine gun range well not further away but uh, is make sure it is low enough that you're not going to get hit before you get there and then make the second one sort of a little bit tight because you know that you're going to need to flare the next point um, I've seen a lot of people get roasted by the machine guns right at the beginning of the attack and then you've got hardly any Zookas to um, go at the other end there are sometimes rocket launchers down here you can use a heavy um, boat of heavies to distract them or you can do a flare land depending on where they are or you can just do a hot landing um, the hit overall is relatively cheap on GBE, so if you're boosted, you'll have probably have a second round of critters and or shocks. Um, but if you're unboosted, you should be able to still get up there. If it's not a hot beach, you should be able to get up there and do one round of shocks um, and do some damage. So the second flare point has gone for the cell just in between the mortars and the boom cannons here. And then what we want to do here at this mid flare point is we want brick to stop and we want the Zookas to catch up, but before the Zookas stop, or like as the Zookas are just about to stop, we want to flare up to the next point. So let's have a look at this next flare point. Um, you can see that it's right in between sort of the cannon and the machine gun, the flamethrower and the uh, other cannon. It's right in that spot there. Um, if you are too far away, you'll find that the Zookas spread a lot more, um, and they'll sort of go anywhere from this left flamethrower to this right machine gun. Uh, which is which is obviously bad um, and if you go too close then the mortar might start to be in range that um, you have to get pretty close to do that uh, so anywhere sort of around this flare point is good so let's move on up obviously you don't want to peek out of the smoke losing our delay we're looking pretty good right now and then we normally do a final smoke about here and then we can do our double smoke so you see bang bang you can get away with a single smoke, but I do not suggest it. It's very risky. Um, just as the Zooka sort of spread out, we will um, think about flaring onto the core. So then we're flaring onto the core nice and late. You can do it before um, uh, Stephanie does it. I think she's a little bit worried that the Zookas are going to spread out of those smokes. So she's flaring onto the core late. But if those smokes are perfect, pretty much where they are now, um, you should be able to get away with flaring on it earlier. And then we're going to look at our shocks. So let's have a look, see how they spread first of all. So see the Zookas on the right did go quite far, um, nearly going spreading out of that smoke, and the ones left aren't going too far. But the majority of the Zookas are sort of staying around about where our flare point was, um, just underneath the building health statue. So let's have a look at our shocks. Um, there's usually always this shock launcher over to the side, which we always have to just be remember be cognizant about um, that the Zookas aren't spreading out because if they do spread out the shock launcher radius will kill all the way up um, sort of to this front left machine gun that is shocked. Um, so the first shock is going to be the four machine guns right by the core and you want to include this one over to the right 
um, it is going to help you out a lot it's going to reach range see how this one is just sort of just in range of a couple so I think he took those ones that are dying at the moment um, so you definitely need to shock this one and it's relatively easy with the quad um, rock with a quad machine gun shock there mortar should be out of range so you don't need to shock that there's usually um, either flamethrowers machine guns sometimes you get away with these being cannons and you don't need to shock them at all and we can get this two rock launcher and the machine guns the machine guns need to be shocked as well and you should be able to get that, all that in one shock sometimes rocket launchers down below that are in range these ones are out of range um, sometimes they have other defenses up here but right now these are sort of our standard shocks uh, even my, maybe more standard that it's just the quad machine gun plus this one and these two rockets and these two machine guns but definitely not uncommon to see those flamethrowers there so we can have the option of throwing critters in the back to distract these cannons yes they are slow firing and they're only going to take one zooker at a time but there's one two three there's eight plus six there so there's 14 there um, that they're, they're going to be firing every what a cannons fire slightly slower than once a second um, so they are going to take quite a few in our two rounds of shocks so that's definitely an option um, for us there I wouldn't worry about this cannon or the sniper towers because they're all out of range but these two groups of cannons there's sometimes cannons here um, so that you could also drop some in the front let's see what Steph is going to do for the second round so those shocks are working nicely we're getting some decent damage on the core brick staying alive which is awesome and then you see that she threw some critters up to the left which is going to distract the two rocket launchers which is obviously great the machine guns are going to um, and flamethrowers are going to shred those critters pretty quickly um, but it's going to provide a little bit more of a distraction and then we've gone for a reshock on the four machine guns and right machine gun because machine guns are ripping us lately and it just distract, distracts the flamethrowers for long enough um, so that we can get a few more shots off and boom down goes the core how many zookas are left i don't think there are any zookas left but brick's there she's happy she's very happy <laughs> So nice work, Steph. Um, let's have another look at that one quickly. Um, that was a solo on a, let's have a look. So this is a 205. Where's the health statue? And so there was one point, just under 1.9 mil on that. Uh, and Stephanie managed to take it all down. I like her work. So we're clearing those mines out. <clears throat> I'm just going to go once all the way through and two times clearing those mines out those boom mines don't need to go if you're only going azukas remember you can just afford to to um for your first couple of azukas to get taken out but as you'll see once we flare up you'll see that brick does manage to get ahead around about where those boom mines are and she will eat it and you will not have your battle orders then we're going to head on up <clears throat> right into this spot at eight o'clock get the double smoke out we can flare on from here it gives you a little bit more time but Steph was wanting to be really safe and she can throw those shocks out really quickly and accurately there we go We've got the four machine gun uh, five machine guns on the right bit of distraction on the second round so you, yeah there's definitely um, a lower GBE hit than some of the other ones that I've seen so definitely um, plan out all your GBE because you may have a second round and there's nothing worse than throwing all your shocks and critters and then realizing that you've got a bunch of GBE that you haven't even used yet because the critter and shock was the perfect play for that second round and boom it went down so that's the tapir pretty standard um, way that we take it out it's usually not a solo um, obviously it's possible because Steph just did it uh, about two mil um, solo but um, yeah it's not necessarily that easy you can always get away with um, two hits on it um, and you don't need all the GB in the world to do it so great hit um, comment down below if you do it any differently if it if you have a better idea um, sometimes we do hit it from above the core and give us a thumbs up like the video thumbs down if you didn't and subscribe for more boom beach yeah